Uh, excited about the, the big challenge we have this week of uh, hitting names and playing uh, a really good Iowa State team that uh, is a veteran club that uh, uh, is playing at a really high level. They have talent on both offense and defense, extremely well-coached football team. They play really well at home. Um, we have to come up with some really good game plans and have to play uh, air-free, disciplined football um, to be able to get ourselves a chance to uh, be successful in the fourth quarter. And that's uh, kind of what we're shooting for right now is just continuing to, to attack each day. We had a good open week, uh, worked a little bit on Iowa State, worked a little bit on ourselves, and now uh, we're back into a, a normal routine. Um, get back out on the grass. Again, we were out on the grass last week. We'll be out on the grass this whole week. Um, get used to the footing as best we can. But uh, it'll be a tremendous challenge for the guys, guys that uh, one that the guys are excited about, looking forward to. Start with John. Yeah, Chris, I know it seems like we've asked you this every time we've seen you now for the last couple of weeks, but do you have an update on, on Briley and whether or not he'll be able to? Um, he's getting closer. Um, he, was, uh, he hasn't put on pads yet, but he's been running around uh, a little bit. So I, I'm more optimistic, but uh, – uh, might be a game time decision and seeing uh, how how he responds, but uh, we are we're we're making improvements from last week. I know the last time you were close to the threshold on being able to play a game that game against Oklahoma, you had to retool some things in the secondary and move some guys around because of that. Is there much of that going on this week where you're having to shift guys in different spots right now because of it? Well, we don't have enough guys to shift around. That's that's probably our issue and. Um, so we're, we're playing with the guys that we have um, and just knocking on wood that uh, we're able to get through uh, Wednesday's test, which will come back Thursday and, and Friday's test, obviously, that will come back. Um, and we're not the only ones in the country dealing with this. Uh, there's teams all over the country in every conference dealing with this. And um, we're just down uh, so many guys at certain spots that um, we can't even move people. Um, and so I'm just knocking on wood that uh, um, we get good results here in the, the next week. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Tell us. Uh, I know it's weird times, um, and probably everybody's dealing with this, but when you look at the total number of guys you've had either opt out or transfer this season, what's just your reaction to, to those numbers right now? It's just 20. I don't really have a reaction to it in the sense of everybody has a different situation and everybody has a different circumstance. Um, and I'm excited about the guys that have stuck with each other and stuck together for their teammates. Um, but it's not easy. I'm not condone, I'm not condemning anybody that, that has left or opted out. Everybody has their own reasons and I respect all those reasons. Um, and so everybody's going through some of this stuff and whether or not it's, it's a kid that's opting out or a kid that's decided to, to leave the program. Um, like it's like it's happening all over the country. There's not one thing throughout this fall that is normal from any other fall. And sometimes that's really hard to handle and really hard to deal with. Given just like how few things college athletes can do right now compared to a normal year is, is it harder to keep these guys pumped up and happy every single day? Well, I think one of the times they are pumped up and happy is going out to practice because they are cooped up all the time. And so uh, I'm so pleased with uh, our, our leadership, uh, the older guys, as well as um, giving the scout team or younger guys, not just scout team snaps, but going against each other uh, in some close to live settings has been beneficial because um, you're right. It's difficult when I'm sitting in my residence hall or apartment and, and uh, um, have all the things that are against me, not going to classes, everything virtual, virtual tutors, virtual everything to come over here and get a chance to just run around and play the sport that we hope that we hope that they love to play uh, with their brothers is, is something that's kind of an outlet. And um, it's been it's been fun to see because I think I know our practices have been good throughout this time, even though uh, the time is so difficult for everyone. And, and I know you're still new to this rivalry with Iowa State, but it seems like, uh, I mean, every single year, this close game, no matter what the two teams are doing, what, what, what's just your sense on that? Why do you think this is such a close game all the time? You know, I, I'm not as familiar probably with the rivalry uh, just because I've only been a part of it, but I'm familiar with Iowa State just growing up in the state of Iowa. 
and uh, Matt Campbell's done a phenomenal job there and have a ton of respect for Matt and, and their staff of what they're doing. And uh, they're just such a, a well-coached football team that uh, um, I, I know that both teams uh, respect each other and excited about the great competition because from, you know, just looking back, there's been some really, really good football games over the last decade or so. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sir Ed? Uh, Coach, a couple uh, questions. One, just just philosophically, uh, looking back uh, to the the two pointers and everything. You know, as fans, it's you know everything works, right? You just say we go for two and you get it, and you're on to the next thing. But how short does the play sheet get when when you have such a a little you know room to work with? And how much more difficult and challenging is it maybe uh, to to come up with those unique plays uh, to to punch it in that maybe people don't realize? Well, you work on them every week and you have a, a, a bunch of two-point plays or a bunch of, you know, three to five-yard plays that you're, you're trying to uh, work each week. And um, everybody has their different um, analytics or da data analysis that tell you uh, when you should go, when you shouldn't go. And then it still has to be a gut decision um, from a coaching staff. And, and uh, I'm obviously responsible for that. But uh, uh, with no hesitation, when it was 12 to nothing, were we going to uh, – go for two and uh, go up 14. We had a similar situation with TCU uh, and nobody talks about it because we got the two point conversion. And so when it works, boy, what a great call. When it doesn't work, why did you do that? I, I get it that there's a second guess world. You know, if I were Tampa Bay Rays, you know, I, I, why are we taking that guy out? He's pitching a gem because he gives up a hit because that's what the gut said. That's what the analytics of the manager did. It, it is what it is guys. And uh, um, I would do it again because I saw it work against TCU and it gave us a, a, a seven point lead at a critical time. Uh, hindsight, you can always look back at different things. I, I would have not wanted to go into the TCU with a 20 to 14 lead with them having the ball, knowing a touchdown was going to beat us rather than a touchdown tying us. So I, I, I sleep well at night, Seren, knowing that uh, I'm giving our kids the best opportunity to be successful. And, and you mentioned the analytics part of it. Where, where do you sit on that? There's, you know, a new one that we are down 14, you scored, you're supposed to go for two there, uh, find out where you are because you can go back and get it the next time. That's kind of the, we've seen that in the NFL a couple of times. Where, where do you sit on that, uh, on that front of the, the analytics? You know, probably it's all a gut thing uh, as far as where you're at. It's, it's, I've seen it in a positive and I've seen it in a negative and, and everybody's seen uh, what was the game this weekend? Why did the kid go out of bounds at the one yard line in the NFL? Why would Browns. somebody do that? Browns. Okay. We had a situation this year where we were in a very similar situation and Deuce uh, scored a touchdown against Texas Tech and we were in a go down situation. It's hard. It's hard to get a kid to go to the ground uh, in, in that situation and end up scoring a touchdown. We're up by 10 and everything worked out. It didn't work out with Indiana and Penn State this year. When Penn State was going in to score, they take a knee after the first down and, and game's over. That those are, you know, those are things that the average fan may say, oh, wh why wouldn't he score? Or why did he go down? Or why did he go out at the one yard line? Those are things that we talk about all the time through in the off season, through our um, fall camp, through our Thursday walk through things. But when you get in the heat of the game, sometimes those things uh, you revert back to a little bit of, well, this is, hey, man, I'm in the open field, I'm going to score. And so everything's kind of a gut feel, but you have those statistics, you have those thoughts uh, in your mind as well as on a book like that thick that you're trying to uh, look at every week. And finally, just to kind of wrap up that thought, situation football, right? We're, we're, we're talking about this right now, but there's only so many minutes in a day in, in, in practice time. I know reps are the most precious thing you have. How, how tough is it to balance that, you know, the situation versus making sure you can go 20 to goal line as opposed to the last, you know, 36 inches? How do you juggle that? How much time to put towards each uh, facet of the game? Yeah, you usually try to do a lot of those analytical situations or situation football on Thursday and Friday when it's closer to game day, as well as you can maybe do it in a walkthrough setting or a jog through setting. It's hard to get that simulated where you're running downfield and you go out of bounds, fall to the knee, whatever, or it's a four minute drive and you get a first down and could run out of bounds, but you, but you end up going to the ground and, and keeping the clock going. Um, you know, you spend a lot of the time on that on late in the week, as well as really during your preseason camp. And then you got to just keep refreshing those guys' minds as far as this is a situation where we would go down. 
or this is a situation uh, where we would go out of bounds or stay in bounds, whatever it may be. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Fitz. Hey, Coach. Um, I spoke to you yesterday, and you talked about the COVID numbers. Uh, you just strike me as a guy who wants to find a reason to play. And it's, it seems like some coaches around the country have kind of used it, used COVID. Well, we're close, so we're not going to play because it's to our advantage to reschedule this game. It, does, it strikes me that you don't want that. Well, I don't think any of us want that just because you just don't know what the future is going to hold of, okay, you can cancel whatever this week, next week, whatever, and feel like you're going to have a chance to play that game because you don't know what's going to happen two weeks from now. And I, I just know how hard these guys have worked since July to have an opportunity to play X amount of games. I, I'm, I'm a little bit amazed, Fitz, that uh, we're going into game eight. And there's a lot of schools that are trying to get through game three and four. Um, and we've been doing this since July, and I can count on probably two hands how many guys haven't missed 14 days or 12 or 13 days or 17 days because they're positive or because they're a close contact. Or, shoot, if a young man's not feeling well, that kid sometimes doesn't come into the facility for 48 hours because then we got to go get a COVID test. Then we got to wait for that COVID test. Uh, and, and that's stuff that I, you'd like to have a plan for. You just don't. And, um, but I, I want to play these games because I think these, these guys deserve the opportunity to compete as much as they can. To follow up um, and get a little philosophical, is, is there almost an advantage to this? I mean, without this, you well, don't know Echo Boydo can play as well as he does. It's forcing guys to step up into the breach. You know, there's not an advantage as far as I wish all of us in the country wish this thing were over. It's not over. But because it's a, quote, free year, and I think that's also led into people opting out, people transferring, people doing this all over the country. You see it everywhere is because, well, this is a free year. Well, I can do whatever the heck I want. Well, that's a positive for for some kids because they're really young and, and they either can move on or, or play a little bit and get that year back. When you get older in, in playing this game, you don't know how many snaps you have in you. You don't know how long my back's going to hold out. My knees are going to hold out. So you just want to play any chance you can. So uh, all of us want this to be over, unfortunately. And I think it's going to lead into the winter sports. It's far from over. Derek. Yeah, Coach, last couple of games before each one, you talked about how the red zone offense has to be better and you need touchdowns instead of field goals. And it didn't seem like you guys really turned the corner with that against Oklahoma State. Is, is there one specific thing you can pinpoint that's kind of plaguing you there? Execution. <laughs> I mean, that, that we just got to keep executing, bottom line. I mean, you can't say it's on this position, that position, the play call, whatever. We just got to execute. And um, – uh, sometimes you got to be careful about putting so much emphasis on you have to do, you have to do, you have to do, rather than just do your job. And if we each do our job within a play, we're going to be successful. And uh, uh, something that, um, you know, we, we've got a red zone period, ones against ones today, because, uh, um, you know, somebody's going to win that and somebody's going to lose that, because we talk about it on defense too. We, we've, we have to be able to, to limit people to field goals. And we've done a nice job of that. But um, today, somebody's going to win a competition. Somebody's going to lose a competition. Um, but it's all about just executing each play and not worried about, oh, I'm at the 12. We have to score. No, we're at the 12. We got to execute a really good play uh, to get five, to get seven, whatever it may be, and not worry about uh, just the results. It's more the process. And I know you're not in a position to share, you know, anything about what seniors may come back and whatnot because of the free year. But do you foresee you, you guys in a spot where you're going to try to convince some of those guys to return? Yeah, probably. But we just haven't gotten into that yet. Um, it's 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 not too early. It's not too late. Um, but I just I want guys to just focus on what they're doing right now and playing, and and we'll have time on that at a later date. And finally, through six games this year in the Big 12, you've beat the same teams you did last year and lost to the same teams you, you did last year. Can, is there a reason for that? Is there so matchups conducive to you guys, or is it just kind of circumstance? I think it's circumstance. I don't really play much into that at all. Um, you better execute every week and, and, uh, and each day getting yourself prepared to play on Saturday. And 
Um, I don't, I don't play much into the matchups. It may be something there, but let's, uh, that's not a big enough body of work. If it were three or four years, maybe. Okay. Thanks coach. You bet. Got two hands raised. We'll go through those starting with Kellis. So Chris, if I went back in time before you guys played Oklahoma and you threw echo into the fire, if I told you he was going to be this good, would you be surprised by that? Um, I think we're none of us are surprised because he's he's probably the fastest guy uh, on the football team. Um, it's one of those things where we talk about and use Echo as, as an example a lot as far as boy, some some freshmen or redshirt freshmen that are not playing as much that get frustrated. Um, look at Echo. You know, look at somebody uh, that has been here for his third year and hadn't played the snap and through the first game hadn't really played at all and all of a sudden he's thrust into it. The biggest thing I'd say is when your opportunity does come, make the most of it. And uh, something that Echo has really done uh, is made the most of his opportunity. And for us, we're really, really excited because he's still a young player. And I think his best football, I know his best football is in front of him. Uh, and it's all about confidence. And he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. What makes him such a good corner now that you've gotten to see him play more? He has really good length. He can run extremely fast. Um, he's aggressive to the ball. Um, and he's just gaining more experience about seeing the field better. A lot of it is seeing pictures. And, and when, you, when you get an opportunity to play as much as he has, uh, the game starts to slow down because you see those pictures um, better and more frequent. And uh, so he's done that and played at a really high level for us. Great. Thanks, Chris. You bet. Last one here, Matt. You're muted. Sorry, there we go. Sorry, Chris. Um, I know there's not really a diagram uh, for this, but and you may deflect, okay, if you do, but is there something that you go to every week or you encourage your staff to go to every week while all this is going on just to keep your sanity? <laughs> um, haven't thought of it that way, Matt. Um, but the fact that we visit every Sunday and go through the bottom half of, quote, the roster, the young guys, the guys that aren't playing a whole bunch uh, right now, and, and spend a good amount of time on those guys talking about um, – finding ways to get those guys more reps, whether it's a special team rep, whether it's going young guys against young guys, uh, like we will today for a couple of uh, maybe 15, 18 plays, just to keep pushing the program forward. Um, because we're always dealing with the now. But in a year like this, when quote it is a free year or however you want to say it, we have to continue to talk about the future and have to continue to to push guys to be better uh and sometimes you forget about that when you're in a season of well let's just work on the guys that are playing I, I don't think you can do that and you have to keep developing you have to keep building your guys you have to keep um developing guys and and we talk about that a bunch as a staff um and uh try to make sure that we get a chance to, to watch some film with those young guys. And, and uh, Riles watches the, the young guys' reps with those young old linemen uh, as often as he can because he knows that that's the future. And those kids, that future may come sooner for some uh, because of maybe the reps they're getting or the coaching they're getting. Is there something let – me, let me ask it this way. Is there something non-football that Chris Kleiman goes to or you encourage your staff to go to away from football – to keep your sanity while all this is going on? I just, we're all in this together. Um, and uh, we're going to have each other's backs through the, the good, the bad. Um, and uh, I've got a great staff, love the guys. Um, and uh, stick together uh, is the bottom line. It's hard because it's not like you're going to have a bunch of staff functions with husbands and wives and kids. Can't do that. You know, we typically would. We can't do any of that stuff. So, um, you know, I gave the staff off this weekend. I thought it was really important uh, that they spent some time with their, with their families and got around their kids and got around their wives. And so we practiced on Friday. And I said, guys, I don't want to see anybody on Saturday and Sunday because you, you need to recharge your own batteries as a coach um, with your family and, and spend some time with the kids because uh, oftentimes they're the ones that get neglected during the season.